Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Doug Book. I'm the uh, president and owner of, uh, of Paved Rain. Uh, let's make sure we can get this stuff uh, moving in the right direction. Uh, we are based out of uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, we will jump right into this thing and, and get going with the, uh, with the Paved Rain webinar. Uh, the Paved Rain system was started in, uh, in 2008, and our uh, first large-scale project uh, was uh, completed by, uh, by Ford Motor Company, a total of almost 90,000 square feet. We'll get into this uh, project a, a little bit uh, more as we keep, uh, as we keep going on. Uh, this is this uh, total about 90,000 uh, square feet uh, that was on, that, on this particular project. In 2018, uh, Ford was going through a plant expansion and they actually went in, cleaned out about 15,000 square foot, picked it up, uh, restacked it, set it aside, and then uh, cut out a bigger area within the traditional asphalt parking lot, dug a hole, lined it with a heavy duty woven monofilament geotextile, filled it with uh, open graded rock, compacted it, and put that same 15,000 square foot of paved drain right back into place. Uh, completely sustainable, reusable system. Ford made a promise to the engineering firm uh, when they went about putting this in back in 2009 and 10, that they would never clean it. And Ford has held true to that. Uh, sounds like a lot of uh, landowners out there, maintenance uh, falls by the wayside, but uh, they have, uh, uh, only maintenance been done has been by, by yours truly, by paved drain. We have, uh, we have done that, uh, that maintenance on that. So from there, since that time, uh, we've had a lot of companies, name brand companies out there that have done the, uh, the installations uh, around the country, some of multiple type of installations, uh, partial listing to some of the cities that have, uh, that have also installed uh, the paved rain system in the last decade. Uh, some of these municipalities are on their second, third, fourth, and fifth round of paved rain projects uh, that, are, that are going in. Uh, so what is paved rain for those of you that aren't familiar? Uh, one thing we really try to go over is what it's not. Uh, it is not a paver. We try to distance ourselves from, uh, from a paver as often as we can. Uh, the only real thing that we have in common with a, with a paver is that it is made out, of, uh, made out of concrete. This should be advancing. There we go. So what is paved drain if it's not a paver? It is a permeable articulating concrete block or PACB. Permeable articulating concrete block. It follows an existing articulating concrete block ASTM, which has been around uh, for almost 30 some years. These blocks are big. Uh, each individual block measures 12 inches by 12 inches, 5.65 inches tall and weighs in it just short of 50 pounds. Uh, for those of you that uh, uh, go out into the, into the uh, fitness world, a 45 pound plate's the big plate. This is a little bit heavier than that, just to give you the sheer weight of what one of these, these blocks are. The paved drain system uh, serves three purposes. It paves, it drains, and it can store storm water within that arch. You actually get some storage above your open aggregate base. Many engineering firms and uh, rules around the country don't allow for that storage. Uh, above the base, which we say is just fine. And what that is, is a little bit of insurance policy for, uh, for the engineering community that's out there. We have multiple US and international patents and it is a proven paving system. And we talk about system all the time because of all the different uh, nuances and things that we add to this to make this uh, work effectively. Uh, we manufacture paved drain in 40 different block manufacturing facilities. Uh, around the U.S., the uh, vast majority of these are all contract manufacturers where we own these molds. And uh, each of these molds that should be coming up on your screen in blue there, they are about uh, $50,000 a piece. We own about 10 of them. We ship these all over the country to the regional or localized uh, block manufacturing facilities where it is manufactured, sends off to the kiln where it cooks overnight. Uh, these block manufacturers typically make about two of these blocks every 10 to 11 seconds. Once they're made, it's a dry cast concrete mix. Uh, you could walk up to it and you could, uh, you could do some damage to it, but once it goes into the kiln and it cooks overnight, comes out of that kiln overnight in about uh, uh, literally about uh, two to three, uh, 
2,000 uh, to 3,500 3, uh, PSI is what it does. Different installation methods that are out there. Uh, every job has some form, of, some form of hand placement installed in it. Uh, when we first came out in 2008, 9, and, and 10, uh, a lot of our projects were mattress installed. And uh, the general contractors out there, there just wasn't enough work to go around. So what we did is uh, we fabricated the individual blocks into mattresses, hooked them up to the spreader bar that you see there, and the spreader bar got hooked up to a, a uh, excavator, if you will. And these mats were picked and swung into place. Over time, we got into more and bigger and different jobs and the economy started to improve and we got into more and more types of uh, machine lace. So the mattress installation has by and large gone away. We've done only, I think, one or two jobs in the past five years as a, as a mattress installation. Machine lay is what is going on now around the country. And this is what a machine lay looks like. Now this is a very professional uh, uh, operator that's done uh, thousands and thousands of square feet of, uh, of installations for us. You'll see him bringing, bringing over an area of 11 by 11 of paved grains being brought over, swung over, and dropped in place. You'll see he's placing it on a, on a geo grid, and uh, away he goes again and does that. So very fast mechanical installation. A crew of uh, four people like that can typically install. First day, you're only going to get 2,300, 2,500 square foot. And uh, the next time out, the uh, next day, you'll probably get anywhere from five to 6,000 square feet. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice on this, uh, we do not fill our joints with rock. Pave drain blocks are big, they interlock against one another. Traditional permeable paver type systems, they're not very thick, they're not very big, and they need that rock in between the joints. It's called aggregate interlock. They don't have that, they can uh, fall apart, become dislodged quite easily. Paved drain, we're designed different. We're kind of a second generation of uh, permeable system that's out there. And what we did when we came up with this, we made it interlock against one another, left that joint open. What that means is we get massive amounts of infiltration into this. Permeable systems, our thought process is, isn't the uh, goal to get the, as much water into the ground as you can. Now we know full well that given time, those will, the, that joint will fill in with debris and it'll be main, it need to be maintained. Now we'll cover that maintenance here in, in depth as we get going. But again, leave these joints open. Uh, we don't fill them with rock or sand intentionally. All corners of the paved drain blocks are rounded that, so, so that no edge is created to catch on a snow plow. And uh, now, will a steel snow plow blade do some damage? Absolutely. It, it, will it chip a block? Yes. Will it scrape a block as you can see in these two photos? Absolutely but these blocks are too big, too thick to become completely dislodged and be kicked out by a, by a snowplow blade. And these, blade, these photos here, these blocks were getting uh, snowplowed with big, huge uh, city Milwaukee uh, dump trucks with snow blades on the front, steel snowplow blades on the front. One thing to make sure is after we install in our Northern climates is we want it sealed. Uh, unlike other permeable systems that are out there, once you have it installed, if you try to seal it, you're gonna get yourself into a little bit of trouble because it won't allow it to infiltrate. We want this system to be sealed uh, against the ravages of, of salt that's out there. So make sure you have that in mind. When we talk about the paved drain system, we talk about this as a, uh, as, a, as a system. And the reason for this is because of the geotextiles that are out there. We are aligned with uh, across the country with geotextile suppliers, uh, most of our aggregate cross sections vary anywhere from two inches is our thinnest on a pool deck upwards of uh, the deepest we've ever gone is about 10 feet. You saw in an earlier photo where the actually the paint drain blocks were uh, the, were the flex like a uh, as a mattress. These is this is a truly a flexible paving system. We need that geotextile on the very bottom. We need that to be a heavy duty woven monofilament or multifilament type geotextile. We try to do everything we can to stay away from the uh, traditional slit tape type geotextiles or the felt like geotextiles. We just don't want those. They're not strong enough. The monofilaments or multifilament geotextiles we use incredibly strong grab pencil strength. But if you hold it under a sink, that water will readily uh, pass through it without becoming blinded or, or uh, blind it off like you would see on the felt type non-woven geotextiles. 
On the bottom part of the photo, you'll see a much bigger stone on that bottom layer. That's our ASTM number two or number three stone, fist-sized rock, rock that has a typically 40% uh, void, void area to it. On top of it, our bedding layer is typically and historically ASTM number 57 or 67 stone, which is your three quarter inch angular clean stone that needs to get compacted and worked into it. On top of the 57 stone is a geo grid. And on top of that is, of course, goes the, goes the paving. So as I said, this base material, it varies all over the place. It is uh, two inches. We've done two inches on a full deck, which we'll show you later. And uh, we've gone as deep as uh, 10, 11 feet. Most of those numbers are based on storage uh, requirements for a particular project. What we consider to be the biggest competitor out there is traditional asphalt. It is the 500 pound gorilla in the room. Uh, this is a pr first project we did in Bladensburg, Maryland. And uh, the city was tired of the constant maintenance of the traditional asphalt. A lot of people don't forget that every time you go in and do some maintenance to your asphalt, uh, when you go back in and seal a crack seal or seal it all together, after you seal the whole thing, you gotta go back in, you gotta restripe it. All of that is maintenance dollars and rumor has it, it's not free. Uh, city of Bladensburg wanted to become a little more environmentally friendly to this, decrease their maintenance costs. And this is what we look like at following installation. Another benefit of the paved drain system is its ability to be installed in inclement weather. This system here was installed in, in uh, dead of winter. It snowed, it sleeted, it rained, it did everything but sunshine. And this contractor was able to stay on, on tracks uh, with, his, uh, with his installation of the paved drain system on this. This particular project, uh, let me back up a slide. Let's see what does it video showing the uh, infiltration of paved drain. A lot of permeable systems that are out there show a garden hose and uh, once that garden hose hits the permeable system it still goes a few feet before it finally infiltrates back into the ground. We decided to ramp that up a little bit and we drove a fire truck directly on top of the paved drain and opened up the valve and began discharging that right on top of the paved drain. Uh, this particular job had a uh, uh, how is it uh, 10,000 square foot installed on it and we dumped that whole truck into the uh, into the paved drain in about uh, 50 60 seconds.